How much does God know about you? Dear God, you may be Cain, and Abel would not kill each other so much if they had their own rooms. It works with my brother. There are some really impressive theological terms that describe God's attributes and abilities. Several of them begin with the prefix omni which means all or total. Omnipresent, God is everywhere. Omnipotent, God has all power. Omniscience, God is all scientific. How the word science is used today, the root, the root of the word science is actually knowledge. So this simply means that God knows everything. In Luke chapter 1, part 37, the angel Gabriel proclaimed, For no word from God will ever fail. You have probably heard something like this before, but have you ever really thought about it? Anything that he chooses to do that is in accordance with his character, he can do. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, declares the word the Lord. As the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. God also knows everything. The problem, of course, is that we can't grasp the expense of his might or wisdom. He is just in a totally different league than we are. He is father, but he is also father, father than our minds can reach. Food for thought. Why might someone be uncomfortable with the truth that God the Almighty knows everything about him or her? What attributes of God the Father would ease their concerns? Almighty Father, thank you that your all-knowing power is mixed with your complete love. Yes, there are things I try to hide, but you know it all, and still you love. Free me to be open with you about everything. I trust you with my secrets. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. How to relate knowledge with love? Dear God, I went to this wedding and they kissed right in church. Is that okay? Yeah, I love kids, innocent ignorance. Isn't it so much more refreshing than an adult know it all arrogance? In fact, Jesus even said that the youngs have an edge. Truly I tell you, anyone who will not receive the kingdom of God like a little child will never enter it. We really need to think about this. Yes, we might know more than a kid, but compared to what there is to know about God, we only know about very low percent more than the child children who wrote the quotes we smiled at this week and we must be like them to experience his kingdom we know that we all possess knowledge but knowledge poofs up while love builds up those who think they know something do not yet know as they ought to know. But whoever loves God is known by God. Belief in God 
isn't about how much we know about it. The only thing we really need to know and understand is that He loves us to the point that we would die for us. That knowledge directly affects the most important part of our faith, the state of our heart, where our love of God originates. Maybe kids are so quick to believe because they are just learning about the world and haven't been callous like adults whose heart are toughened by life's experiences. Regardless of the reason, kids see God in a, small, in a simple, clean-cut way. Yeah, kids don't know everything in the world, but God is not of this world anyway. Oh God, you tell us to come to you as a child does. Please make me childlike in my faith so I can believe in you more intimately than I do now. I will continue to increase my knowledge about you, but please don't let that interfere with my relationship with you. I don't know much, but what I do know is that I love you, Lord, and it's great to be known by you too. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Getting a small glimpse of the divine buried underneath the rubbish of conventional religious nations and may require an intelligent and vigorous search before it is finally unneeded and exposed for what it is. Only after the ordeal of painful self-probing uh, are we likely to discover what we actually believe, believe about God. Don't we all wish God would reveal more of himself? Moses did too. The Lord replied, My presence will go with you and I will give you rest. Then Moses said, Now show me your glory. Moses didn't know what he was asking. When he asked God to see his glory, it was like asking God to pour the oceans through a th uh, thunder. The thunder couldn't possibly handle it. Neither could we. We couldn't possibly handle God's infinite glory with the limited mind we possess. Thankfully, God reveals himself partially. And the Lord said, I will cause all my goodness to pass in front of you, and I will proclaim my name, the Lord, in your presence. I will have mercy on whom, whom I will have mercy, and I will have compassion on whom I will have compassion. But he said, You cannot see my face, for no one may see me and live. This partial revelation is more than enough for us today with the word of God in your minds and the presence of his spirit in our heart, we can see more than we need to respond appropriately. We respect him greatly. We revere him continually. We replace him with nothing. Glorious God, Thank you for your merciful restraint in revealing your glory. Thank you for showing me more than enough. Reveal me my true beliefs, painful as that may be, 
and conform my beliefs about you to the truth so that the truth can set me free. Amen. Hallelujah. What is your priorities? Cure for an obsession. Get another one. Because we aren't able to fully comprehend God, it can be easy to turn our attentions to more finite things, things we can comprehend on a much more ta- uh, tangible level. Moses got an intense glimpse of God's glory on Mount Sinai. He then descended the mountain with uh, supernaturally carved tables containing the law of the holy and powerful God. It might be safe to say that he was excited to go and tell his people what God had to say, but what did he find? While he was gone, the Israelites made a large golden calf and they were worshipping it as if their uh, lives depend upon it. He said to Aaron, what did these people do to you that you led them into such a great sin? Do not be angry, my lord. Aaron answered, you know how prone these people are to evil. They said to me, make us gods who will go before us. So I told them, whoever has any gold jewelry, take it off. Then they gave me the gold and I threw it into the fire and out came this calf. Make us gods who will go before us. That's the essence of idolatry. Idolatry takes place anytime we allow anything to take the place of God as the central life giving almighty force in our lives. In the Western world, golden calves are pretty much out of work, but in their place we have managed to create a huge list of other things that become our substitutes for God. Girlfriends, boyfriends, the body and physical pleasures, carries, knowledge, money, comfort, reputation, security, cars, houses, clothes. The list goes on and on. These things will stay with us and why for our ultimate attention for the rest of our lives. However, it's our choice to give in to these things. Always choose God above all because He is perfect and will never fail. God, remind me to keep you where you belong in my priorities. Keep me faithful and joyful in what you have given me. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Grace will get us through. Though that the days we are living through are fraught with difficulty, nothing has taken their Lord by surprise. He is still on his throne and his reign of grace continues to empower all who draw near t- uh, through his truth, uh, trustworthy word. That's the message an aging Paul preached to his child in the faith, Timothy, and that's the message in the Bible to Timothy 3, which eagers to share with you. Like Timothy, God grants all the grace you need to endure the most difficult of days. By His Spirit, you can press on as you continue to be convinced of every truth with which you are conversant. Every blessing. Amen. 
finding fulfillment in Christ. Can you leave it all behind? I hope so because you can't go back. We often make a distinction between people who believe in God and those who don't. If someone knows about God, we think that's better than not knowing about God. But that's not the distinction the Bible makes. The Bible says that people either believe in the true God or they believe in idols. Knowledge of God doesn't change the state of your heart and it's the heart that matters the most. It is in the lure or our passion and faith away from the mighty God. Either can be metal or they can be mental, but there is a constant temptation to put trust in is there any God besides me? No, there is no other rock. I know not one. All who make idols are nothing, and the things they treasure are worthless. Those who would speak up for them are blind. They are uh, ignorant to their own shame. Who shapes a god and acts an idol which can profi- uh, profit nothing god and god alone is almighty there is not a single idol on the face of the earth that we can fully depend on to meet our needs they simply aren't able to do so and so they eventually leave our hearts empty, our expectation broken, and our dreams shattered. Even the idols that appear to be able to sustain us will ultimately crumble at the moment of death, for they are completely unable to help us beyond the grave. Father, I say that you are all I need in this life, but in all honestly, I don't fully believe it. Speak to me now, reveal the idols that I cling to. Show me what I am relying on to fulfill my needs and enable me to choose you for fulfillment instead. Amen, hallelujah, amen. God's ability to save. If you have not chosen the kingdom of God first, it will in the end make no difference what you have chosen instead. For you have missed the purpose of for which you are formed, and you will have forsaken the only thing that satisfies. God, merciful as He is, was unwilling to blow Moses out of the water by showing him his glory but even so God was willing to show him the effects of his glory he allowed Moses to see his back to see the results of his abilities God does the right God does the thing today because he is almighty there are certain things that he and only he is able to do we may not be able to understand how or why he does these things for his ways and his motive, uh, motives are far beyond our own but as a consequence of the things that we cannot see there are certain things that we can see that reveal God's glory to us therefore he is able to save completely those who come to God through him because he always lives to intercede for them 
God is able to save us. At the core of the gospel is the truth that God is able to find someone who has been lost. He can find them and he can save them. He can do this physically, emotionally and spiritually. Though we have rebelled and gone our own way, God is able to reverse the consequences of our arrogant ignorant choices he is able to save us from the wrath and judgment that we are due because he paid the penalty for those sins himself when he came to earth as a man and died on the cross in our place yes he is able but the choose to reach up and allow him to do it is yours savior although i can't see you i know you are real because of what you have done on this earth your mercy is awesome and i can't get enough with empty hands i reach up to receive your salvation thank you for saving my lost soul amen hallelujah amen exhaustion isn't a virtue a word for the weary for nearly a year now it's been difficult to know what's normal lives and livelihoods have been disrupted in almost every imaginable way and the world looks vastly different than it did a new short months ago even in the church it's difficult for many christians to know what's normal with so many voices offering to unlock the secrets of life how do you know what's worthy and your heart's time and attention bible cuts through the clutter and show from scripture the simple beauty of the normal christian life here's a hint it's not about how truly uh, you tire yourself to do great things for Jesus. It's about how truly he did everything needed for you to finally rest. Only Jesus, burn out is real. When you have given all you have got to give, it's physically, emotionally and spiritually de depleting. But to everyone who's worn out, weary, and on the brink of burn, burn out, God speaks a single word of hope and comfort, Jesus. Jesus is ready to bear every burden that leaves you feeling burned out and broken. And that's why I want to encourage you the Bible teaching, you need rest experience true rest in Jesus it seems more people than ever are feeling exhausted depleted and teetering on the edge of burnout but God invites you to experience something so much better a life where you draw your strength energy and joy from resting in him I encourage you to slow down and say yes to God's invitation in the Bible teaching you need rest which helps more people experience life in Christ just request yours when you give above and find true soul rest in Jesus in whose power do you trust God will never put you in situation that you can't handle. I hear that saying all the time. Sometimes I automatically nod my head because it just sounds right. Like a, a plaque uh, on your mom's fridge. It's usually presented as a 
can say summary of God's care for us. The problem is it isn't true. We have all hit obstacles in our walks that aren't possible for us to pass. In fact, I would even say that God puts things in our lives that we cannot take care of on purpose. If we could handle everything on our own, there would be no need for us to rely on God and that is what how we were designed to live. And God is able to bless you abundantly so that in all things at all times, having all that you need, you will abound in every good work. He is able to empower us. Because of God's grace, we are able to do things that we would be unable to do on our own. How does that work? I have no idea. I don't know how it is that He energizes our thoughts or the molecules in our bodies to allow us to accomplish things and choose things that uh, we couldn't without his strength but we know that he does and when we obey him and allow him to work through us we also experience it Father, it's tough to take on the challenges that I sometimes have to face. I don't want to try it on my own. I am weak. You are strong. Be my strength. May others see what you are doing through me and be amazed by it. Let the world know through your works in the in me that you are the source of this power. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. <laughs>